Hi, my name is Mike Scott, product manager for the Modal Shop Portable Vibration Calibrator. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how to calibrate a piezoresistive accelerometer with the Portable Vibration Calibrator. A piezoresistive accelerometer is typically used in shock applications because the output is low, but they have a high range of sensitivity. The sensor I'll be testing today is 0.2 millivolts per G when excited with a 10 volt DC source. Piezoresistive accelerometers are ratiometric, so the output of the sensor changes depending upon the voltage excitation. And again, I'll be using 10 volts DC today. And finally, there are four wire system, bridge excitation. So there's positive and negative excitation, and there's positive and negative signal output. So we'll be using a bridge signal conditioner to power the sensor. We won't go into great detail about the portable vibration calibrator. We already have hours of video content devoted to the calibrator, and we wanted to keep our focus narrow on the PR accelerometer. At the end of the video, if you stick around, I'll make some suggestions as to uh, what videos you could watch to learn further about the portable vibration calibrator. As technical support, most of my job is mounting and power. If you can accomplish these two things, you're well on your way to calibrating vibration sensors. To help you for PR, we offer the model 9100 PR calibration kit. It features a bridge signal conditioner with 10 volts DC excitation and gain, connection cables with labeled push terminals to accept the flying leads off of a typical piezoresistive accelerometer, BNC to BNC cable to connect the output of the signal conditioner to the portable vibration calibrator, and finally, mounting hardware, a mounting plate for both adhesive and screw mounting. Let's take a closer look. When mounting the transducer, the first step is to apply some silicone grease to the top of the shaker. I'm going to adhesively mount it, but I already have it connected to a mounting pad, and I want the silicone grease in between the two metal-to-metal -metal surfaces, my mounting pad and the top of the shaker. Now it's a little awkward because I have so much integral cable here. Uh, we get the threads to catch, and then it's not so bad. Just like that. Okay, now it's on there. Get rid of that for now. And the next step is to make sure that our mounting pad is nice and tight. About 10 inch pounds of torque, wrist tight is good enough. Make sure you secure the shaker's armature and tighten with a crescent wrench or a torque wrench against that shaker armature. The 9100 PR is supplied with the model 9155 mount 18 screw mounting pad for piezoresistive sensors with supplied screws. Okay, so first we connect our binder connector, which is already wired to the flying leads of the sensor under test. And next we connect the BNC to the output. And then the other end of the BNC to the shaker. And then finally we set our gain. That's one times, 10 times, and I'm gonna use 100 times gain. Now that we've mounted our transducer and we've powered it with the signal conditioner and applied 100 times gain, we are ready to test. So in manual mode, the first step would be to select PR as the sensor type. So to do that, you press frequency and you go into the test settings menu. This pauses the shaker and then we scroll down to PR as a sensor type. I already had it selected, but just to show you what happens as you toggle through these options, we land on PR again from ICP charge voltage and modulated current. And now we have selected PR as our sensor type. And the final step in manual mode is to go to the rotate the file button until you see tools, press it, use file to select the options menu, and then use file again to set the piezoresistive sensor gain value. And this defaults to either 10 or 100 times gain. I like to use 100 times gain. And to select that, we press frequency. To select 10, we would press amplitude. Frequency is 100. We select that. And you can see back on the home screen, I'm getting the correct output of 0.22 millivolts per G at 2G's peak and 100 hertz. 
Now let's enter into an automated step sign calibration test. So to do that, I press frequency. I go back to the test settings. We call it a cal route. Click next to cal route where it says off. Activate route. And I'm going to choose my test for the 7264B, which I've already loaded. Go back. And now I'm locked into a cal route. If I spin the amplitude dial, nothing will happen. And my first test point is at 100 hertz and 2 G's peak. I'm getting 0.22 millivolts per G. When I press the file button, the calibrator tells me whether this value passes or fails. Uh, pass or fail is determined uh, by the lower bound, where I'm looking for a minimum output of 0.15 millivolts per G. And since I got 0.22, I pass. Moving on, the rest of my test points need to stay within 5%, plus or minus 5%, of my output at 100 hertz. So I need to stay within 5% of 0.22 millivolts per G. At 5,000 hertz, which is the maximum frequency uh, range of this transducer, I pass. I was shaking at 2 G's peak, moving on to 4,000 hertz, and waiting for the amplitude to settle. We pass. 3,000 hertz, still 0.23 millivolts per G at 2 G's peak, and we pass again, 2 G's peak, 2,000 hertz. Keep, I continue to press the file button, which saves data to the memory and gives me the pass-fail notification, and then advances to the next test point. 1,000 hertz, 5,000 hertz at 2 G's peak, 300 hertz, 2 G's peak, and I'm going to go down to 20 hertz, which is the low end of the OEM calibration for this transducer. But you could go lower with the portable vibration calibrator. It has 5 hertz low frequency response. 20 hertz is my last test point. Go ahead and save this one to the memory. And again, the calibration point passes. Now that I'm done, the model number populates in the model number section. I could enter the serial number here. But I'll skip that and hit save to save it to the memory. Now I'm ready to export it to the USB and create my calibration certificate. All right, so we just completed our calibration of the 7264B-2000 2000G piezoresistive accelerometer. Let's show how to create the calibration certificate. I've already opened the report generation workbook which is a Microsoft Excel macro-enabled file that's supplied with the portable vibration calibrator. I'm on the frequency response data tab and I performed a frequency response calibration. So this is where I want to import the data from the calibrator into the file. So I click import, go to calrecords underscore PVC on the USB drive, find the date, and it was my final record of the day. So down here is 7264B-2000. The data populates in the data table. Reference frequency of 100 hertz. View certificate. And you can see the calibration report there. Uh, sensitivity at 100 hertz of 0.22 millivolts per G. Test level of 2 G's peak. If I scroll down a little bit, you can see the data table the deviations at each frequency from the sensitivity at reference. 5% was the tolerance, so every point passes calibration as you can see there. And since every point was within plus or minus 5%, the table was drawn on plus or minus 5%. You can keep that, or if you want to zoom out just a little bit, you of course can. I'm not changing any data here. I'm just kind of changing the way the graph looks. And some people like a, a graph that's a little bit more zoomed out, doesn't get as close to the edges on a CalCert. You can enter the serial number, not sure what it was. Manufacturer was the Indevco division of uh, PCB. So the rest of the form you can fill out in any way that you would like. Um, and then I recommend Coming down to the bottom, I would note uh, that we used uh, 10 volts DC excitation. 
And finally, as found, intolerance, as left, intolerance. You could put your initials in there. I can self-approve it. And you can see the date and time down here at the bottom right. And that's it. That is the creation of a calibration certificate for piezoresistive accelerometer. So there you have it. A frequency response sweep calibration for a piezoresistive accelerometer with 0.2 millivolt per G output from 20 hertz to 5000 hertz. To learn how to program the calibrator like I did in this video, check out our video on programming an automated stepped sign calibration test, which we call CalRoute. We also have a video on adhesive sensor mounting and removal. And finally, if you want to learn more about the portable calibrator in general, check out our video vault or our YouTube page. There you will find videos on how to calibrate charge mode accelerometers, ICP accelerometers, and much more. Thanks for watching.